Well, this has to be the most absurd full-size bushcraft knife or fixed blade knife that I have ever seen. And I've seen a lot of them. But apparently this is a real production knife that I had no idea existed. And it's called the Bowie Axe. And it's made by a company called Trubal. T-R-U hyphen B-A-L. And it is the Bowie Axe. You can perfectly see Bowie Axe stamped right there in the blade cheek. And on the other side, Trubal, company's brand name. Let me know in the comments if you've ever heard of or seen one of these before. It's got a little symbol on there as well. Looks like it's all original, but it's in rough shape. We've got to do a full restoration on this for a client. You know we're going to make it look good. So let's get to work. The first step so we can do a proper finishing here, I'm going to take off these scales. And before I do that, this does have a little bit of a crisp edge on it still. So I want to cover that up. Anytime you're going to be forcing, like I have to put a little bit of pressure on this in the, in the bandsaw, we want to cover that up so we're not risking ourselves there. That is the finish now we have off of that machine. You can see that pitting there. That pitting is still there. Now here's where I want to address something that a lot of people brought up in, uh, in, a, in a recent video in that chef's knife restoration. Now some of you noticed that there were still scratches on the cheats. Why didn't you remove the scratches? You should have removed the scratches. Well, I could not answer every comment that said that. I answered as many as I can. It's because blades have markings in them. The Bowie Axe, the True Bell, Bell, True Bell brand name there. And those chef's knives had very faint little etchings. What EDC knife am I carrying here today? Ooh, she's dirty. <laughs> Apologies. But have a look at that Benchmade logo there that's etched into this 940. There's only so many times that you can refurbish this knife, and this knife is, is pretty new, but if this were to get all scratched up, there's only so many times you can resurface this and, and buff this before that is gone forever. And that would be a sad, sad loss, and that was exactly the case with those Wustaf uh, kitchen knives that we did. Yes, there were scratches in the blade from use and from previous restorations and cleanups. I'm sure the, the last maker, the, the other guy that, that botched the handle job, I'm sure he put some scratches in there as well. And at that point, it's a judgment call. I, I went to the owner and asked, you know, would you rather all scratches be removed and a perfect blade finish left behind and lose all that insignia, the etching, or in this case, it could be this stamp, although the stamp is pretty deep, so it's kind of a judgment call, or would you rather leave the scratches as is and um, still have your, your branding left in there. So the client absolutely did not want to lose that etching, that branding, and that's usually the case, and, and that would be the choice that I'd make as well. So we have to make a judgment now on how far we're going to take this. I scrubbed it to this point with a scotch bright. I don't think I want to go any further. I've gotten all that rust out of that pitting, but in order to actually remove the pitting, I would need to really hammer down on the surface of this blade. What I'm going to do instead is leave it like this. We've got the corrosion off. We're going to give it a very coarse buffing 
to just pull the rest of the 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 grit and everything out of there and just leave this with a, a real a real pretty finish or what I would call a pretty characterized finish. If you're doing restoration work and you don't have a buffing machine, you are really wasting a lot of time doing chores by hand that you could be doing with a machine. Now what I switched to here is what's called a sizzle wheel. There are all different types of wheels. See, this is a, a, an open, a loosely sewn wheel. The more rows of stitching, the more firm this wheel will be. So this is kind of a, a mid-tier. It's not a hard wheel. It's not a real soft wheel either. It's kind of open, nice for light polishing. This here is almost like a burlap material. Very scratchy. If I turn this machine on, you run your bare skin into it. If you don't have calluses, it won't feel very comfortable. It will... Uh, scratch and kind of burn your skin. But for steel, where you want a real aggressive working of the steel, this is awesome with some good compound. And so I'd love to hear you guys comment. We'll do a little vote down in the comment section. Would you rather uh, a knife that looks just like it came from the factory in terms of finish, a perfectly polished and restored finish, but have lost all your brand insignia, all your blade etching, branding, all that stuff? Or would you rather have a blade that looks something like that? Still got some pitting in there. We've still got kind of a roughish looking finish, but look how deep that stamp is. It's still in perfect condition. We haven't lost any life on the blade. We haven't thinned it, anything like that. And that's how it looks at this point. We haven't lost any value to the blade. Gonna do some real nice black micarta for our friend here and a bright, Cherry red liner. Have a look at this bake apple here that I currently have on the bench. Still a work in progress. Yellow liners. This is another one with a fuller forge finish. <clears throat> Beautiful two-part epoxy here. We don't need a whole lot. Little tip when gluing a joint, whether it be in woodworking or, or knife making or, or whatever, don't clamp too tight. I used to make this mistake uh, earlier on in my make a career where you, you squeeze all the, the glue out of your joint. Next day, let's remove those clamps. Let's get to profiling that handle. Sometimes the clamps stick in the epoxy a little bit that's on the surface. Have a look at that. Now that is a solid chunk of micarta right there.
Sheath is overall not bad. Very solid, very sturdy. Just a little worn, deconditioned looking. We covered that on a recent video. Just started touching up those brass, uh, well they're not brass, like a nickel pin. They've got some kind of shellac or something over them, probably from a sheath coating in the past. We'll clean that up. I've already started right there. We'll go ahead and finish those. Looks pretty good. We did a cleaning of those pin heads there, the rivet heads. Then I stripped the, any finish or glaze off with a cleaner. Now we're going to give it some proper nourishment. This is always a fun part. Look how fast that leather is, uh, is drinking up that oil. And we're done with another client's restoration, the Bowie Axe. Never heard of it before, like I said. Let's have a look at that beautiful, healthy leather there now. This will lighten up a little bit in color on the way back to its owner. Lovely. Have a look at that black micarta, the red liner. We gave the client a little more handle. Shiny finishes like this are always kind of difficult to show on camera. Look at the smudging there now, messing. Look at that. Showing the oils. We gave the, the client a little more handle. This was a really small handle for what the knife was designed to do. It was very thin this way, really not much meat for the hand, and short as well. Just And, and this, of course, is made for, for chopping, I would imagine, being a Bowie axe. And all of that front weight there, that's why we got that depth to add all that weight. We repeated the, the factory convex groin. Let's check out the micarta there, polished brass pins. We chamfered the the front and rear so it goes into the sheath real nicely cleaned up that tang real nice a little red liner just a little bit of pop there a little bit of accent color to make this a little more special isn't that a nice textured black micarta that's a beautiful textured micarta quick little paper test here Lovely. We didn't do, uh, the client didn't want like a mirror polished, like a perfected stone edge. That's very understandable here for what this tool is designed for. That would be a waste of, uh, a waste of money on his part to, to have me do that. And just, of course, an edge like that wouldn't hold up. This is a beautifully crisp edge here now. And uh, we'll do everything that this tool was designed to do. And so thank you for clicking on another video. I really appreciate it. If you would, share. That's the, the best way that you can help this video is, is text the link to a friend or to your cousin or your brother or your sister or your dad or, or whatever. Post it on your social media some way. Share it to your story on Instagram. Share it in some way. That's the best way you can help. You can also help by hitting that like button, leaving a comment down below, and subscribing if it's your first time here. Really appreciate your attention. And I hope the client enjoys his newly restored family heirloom. Have you checked out the truck build yet? I think it's worth your while. <laughs> hey ladies! Oh, take it easy. There you go. How are you doing today, huh? You having a good day? Just look at the evening we have here. Water's running off the roof, snow is melting, spring has sprung. We'll get plenty of snow yet, but looking forward to that sunny weather. Thanks for watching.